Mr. Halley, uh, let's continue in this uh, uh, perspective. Uh, we, we highlighted in the preamble that uh, uh, the, the, the United States or the, the Western uh, part of the con uh, continent have been very uh, silent uh, as far as this hit list is concerned. So why do, what do you explain uh, is the reason why the mainstream or Western media has remained silent to this and uh, how can uh, the narratives be changed? only silent they are participating in it through the support of the u.s government and and nato the people who run the hit list the the, the one it starts with the committee to counter disinformation sounds innocent enough but these are the ones who are gathering the names of journalists that they say are hostile to the ukrainian people and they have called us, and I'm on that list, as is Jason, they've called us information terrorists. Now, their meetings started, the first big public meeting was in July of this year, where they put out the first list. But what they're doing is putting out these lists as a way of trying to intimidate people who live outside of Ukraine, because many of the people on the list now don't live in Ukraine. But this is also a way of changing the subject. Because what is it? The, why is the Schiller Institute so heavily represented on this list? 31 of the first 72 people named spoke at our conferences. And what did they talk about? We're talking about a new security order and a new financial architecture. Now, this, is, this gets to the heart of the matter. The battle in Ukraine is not about the freedom and democracy in Ukraine because the Western governments don't care about the freedom and democracy in Ukraine. They don't care about prosperity for Ukrainians. If they did, they wouldn't send the International Monetary Fund into Ukraine to organize the economy. And people in Africa know what this means. What happens when the IMF comes into your country? You get put under austerity. You're threatened with cutoff of credit and trade. And what's happened is that there's an emergence of a new financial system that's taking place with Russia and China at the heart of it. And they're committed to the idea of a multilateral world order rather than a unipolar world order. And so that's why NATO and the United States are targeting Russia. And anyone who speaks against that unipolar order is being accused of being a mouthpiece for Putin. It and the conditions creating the war be the mitigated to ensure that, uh, uh, that there is peace and, and the people, especially the, the Ukrainian people, do not live in fear? Well, I, I think the first step is to stop the flow of weapons. It doesn't help anybody except arms manufacturers to send these modern offensive weapons to Ukraine. And the idea that the U.S. is going to continue to send weapons, they're putting more pressure on Germany to send weapons, uh, pressure on other countries to provide ammunition for the Ukrainian forces. That's a, a, a problem in the first place. Now, here's an irony. In the United States, the family members of American men and women in the armed forces are not paid enough to provide food for their families. They're on food stamps, government programs to get cheap food to feed their children. And yet we're spending $60 billion to send weapons to Ukraine. Now, this is something that touches many, many families, the majority of families in the United States. But they have no access, or they think they have no access to talk to the Congress. And if you censor voices like ours, they're not hearing what they can do about it. Now, here are a couple of simple points. One of the issues was Ukraine demanding membership in NATO. And the Russians said they would not tolerate NATO forces on their border with modern offensive weapons, including possibly nuclear weapons. For the same reason, 60 years ago, John Kennedy took the world to the edge of nuclear war to stop Russian Soviet missiles from being placed in Cuba. Putin was making the same argument for Russia. 
He called for no membership in NATO for Ukraine, neutral status, security guarantees for Ukraine, and stop killing Russian language citizens in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. And also denazification, because there's a, a core of so-called Ukrainian nationalists that take their ideology from the Ukrainians in the 1940s who joined Hitler. But those are reasonable demands. Zelensky agreed that Ukraine should, would not be able to go into NATO. The idea of security guarantees, of course, he'd accept that. But he wouldn't accept the idea of pulling the troops back that were shelling eastern Ukraine that had killed 14,000 people so far. And he denies that there are Nazis in his government, when in fact there are pictures of these people at parades marching behind pictures of the Ukrainian Nazis of World War II, the same ones who were responsible Ukrainian nationalists for killing Jews, Hungarians, Poles, and Romanians, hundreds of thousands of them working with the Nazis in World War II. It's the allegiance to that ideology, that racialism, that Nazi racism, that has to stop, that Putin said is not tolerable. Now, what does the United States say about that? Oh, there are no Nazis in Ukraine. Well, the reason these Nazis were saved after World War II was the CIA and MI6 allowed them to come to the United States and Germany and protected them to use them against the Soviets. Well, the Soviet Union isn't there anymore. There's no need to have Nazis to protect people in Ukraine. So why will Zelensky not accept these terms? Well, I think that this is where you see the problem. It's the NATO countries, especially the United States and the British, who want this war. That's the issue. The British want to do something to weaken Russia for the same reason they organized World War I and World War II, because they didn't want a German-Russian alliance, because they thought that would threaten the British and the European empires. Yeah. Now, today, we just saw with the death of Queen Elizabeth, the discussion of the Commonwealth. Part of the problem in Africa, the reason Africa has not had a chance to have a full development is because the Commonwealth represents a new form of empire using financial control to prevent the development of Africa, including the French and the French sections, the former French colonies, the British in particular. And the Russians are saying, be free, be sovereign. If you want to trade with China, you want to build rail systems, you want to build nuclear power plants, that's for you to decide. But the Western bankers say, no, you can't do that. And the green policy says, no, you'll heat up the planet. Well, that's nonsense. That's an excuse to kill Africans the same way they're killing Ukrainians. And so in a sense, this fight in Ukraine over the opposition to NATO and the sanctions is a fight for independence and sovereignty of African nations. And I'm very happy to say that the chairman of the African Union, Macky Sall from Senegal, said that the Africans will not join the side of the West against Russia. The South Africans have been clear on that. Many African leaders have been clear on that in the United Nations. And it shows that people who know colonialism best don't want to submit to the new form of colonialism called the Green New Deal and the Great Reset. Afrique Média Le monde, c'est nous